Hello, let's see how we can create a relative frequency histogram from intervals of data. So I've typed in some of the information from our worksheet that has class intervals and so on. When I click on this first cell, you can see there's a bunch of stuff written in there, but only a little bit is showing. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that. If we double click right between where the A and the B line is up on the title bar there, if I double click there, it'll make it wide enough to display all of my data, but it's kind of super wide and my data is really not that wide. So I really would rather it was around this wide, but I want it to kind of show everything. So what I can do when I'm sitting on that cell is I can just click wrap text and that is going to do what you see here, which makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, I would like it a little bit wider, I think. So I'll just adjust. That looks nice to me now. Now I can see that my row got a little longer than it needs, so I can try coming here to the side and click make it a little bit smaller. So I just double click between the one and the two where I have this symbol, and then it makes it just a little bit smaller for me. So here I am looking at the class interval. That looks very nice. Now I have the same issue with the rest of these cells because they're much longer and not all the words are displaying. So I can just select them all and come back to the home menu and do wrap text. And it's going to take care of it for me mostly. And if I just make it a little wider and then double click, generally works best, make it a little wider and then double click. This one's probably a little too wide, so we'll make it a little, there we go, that looks better. And now I need to come back over, select my row one again, and double click in between the one and the two, so that it'll make it, shrink it up just a little. Now this kind of looks like what I have on my paper. Um, the frequencies, the number of people who had this many texts, I can just type in real quick. And I changed this one to 19 like we did in class. So. Um, I don't have any of these other calculations done. I know we did them by hand, but I want to show you how to do them in Excel, and then you can look at the paper in front of you to compare. So if I want to sum up all of these numbers here, which I need to do to be able to find my relative frequencies, then I can sit on the first one. So I click on that first cell and then push Control, Shift, and Down Arrow. It's amazing. It'll select all the numbers until there's a gap. So it goes all the way to the end. So I have all my numbers selected. And then I want to use auto sum. So you're looking for something like that, or you might just see this little summation sign. And so you're going to click on that. And then you see it added them all up and got 110 like we did when we added by hand. And then I can calculate the relative frequencies or the probability of each of those occurring. Remember for this first one, it's going to be 14 divided by 110. So to do that in Excel, I type in the equals. I tell Excel I want you to calculate. And then I click on the 14 and then I type in the divide. And then I click on that sum down at the bottom and I push enter. And now it's giving me a frequency, but it has a lot of digits showing. So I want to format this. So I will click on the cell, right click, and I can do format cells here, or I can come up to here. And if I see the format I want, I can come here and choose different formats. I just want a general um, number format, but I want a certain number of digits. So here I can decrease how many digits are showing. And so I can click on that and get it down to four digits and it rounds for you automatically for the display. I could also click on it, right click, and then do format cells. This is another way if your computer's not showing these nice functions at the top, it would be you have an older version of Excel than I do. Um, I could click over here and say number and then change the number of decimal places by how many digits are showing here. So it says four, that means four digits will show. And then OK. Looks like I clicked it a couple of times. There. Now that I have this calculation looking how I want it to, I click on the cell again, and then I'm going to the bottom right. See how it changes from a big fat plus to a little skinny black plus? Then if I have that little skinny black plus, 
I'm not touching anything right now. I have the little skinny black plus, plus then I push down on my mouse button and drag down. It's going to pull that formula that I had for the first cell down to every other cell. And I see I have a problem, so let's go back and take a look. When I was on this first cell, if I click on it, it's taking the 14 that's just to the left and dividing by the 110. And if I click on the next cell, so I'm just going to push enter, and then I'll click up here. Do you see how it's showing me the colored pieces there? So it's saying, okay, for this cell, I'm using 14 divided by the one after the total, which isn't what I want. So here's how we can fix it. I'm going to push enter, come back to that original one, and I'll sit right beside anywhere on that B12, which is this number here. And that's what I don't want it to drag down. And so I need to make it a static reference. So I use the F4 key. So I'll just push the F4. And it, see how it put $B$12 now? That's telling Excel, even when you drag all the other formulas down, don't for this last one. Leave it right where it is. So we'll push Enter. And then now when I drag, it's giving me valid values. And let's check in and see what it's doing. So now it's saying, OK, the one to the left divided by that 110. Let's check one that's down a little further. Right there, maybe. And you can see, OK, still the one to the left, but divided by that 110. So that fixed my problem. And that, that'll help you anytime you have a number that's just in a single place and you want to drag everything else but that one. You need to make it static. And to do that, remember, I used the F4 key. You can also type in $B$12 if you want to. It works the exact same way. So now that I have this table set up how we did on paper and very quickly, right, now I can start doing some work to get my, my graph to look just, just how I want it. So I'm going to insert here. And I think I'll put in a couple of columns. And I want one column to be lower bound, upper bound, and I want to have the midpoint. Because the midpoint is what I want to show on the graph, on the histogram. So for the lower bound for this first interval, so it's this row that I'm on, 50 to 55, the smallest um, number of texts in a day for this line is going to be 50. And the maximum, it says 50 to 55, but remember the 55 is not included. It, it's up to, but not including the 55. And since we can't get 54.5 texts in a day, 54 is actually the highest number of texts that we would have for this um, interval right here. So I also want to figure out what's the midpoint. So I can use Excel. There are a couple of functions I can do. I can type it in by hand to have it add up 50 plus 54 and divide by 2. That will give me the exact middle. Or I can use the Excel function that is called average and use that. So I'll show you average on this one. So equals average. And then I put a left parenthesis. And then I want to just give it the numbers that I want to average. So I've just selected both of those, right parenthesis, and push enter. Now, what number do we expect to get? That's right, a 52. So let's see what we get. And it did come to 52. Now I have to do one more row and then I can drag. I'll show you that. So if I try it, let's just, let's just see. If I try select these and drag them down, it's not increasing my numbers at all. So I have to give Excel a pattern. So I'm just going to say Control Z, which makes it undo what I just did. And then I'm coming back. This, this row, I'll do this row, and then I should be able to drag it down because Excel will see the pattern that I increased by 5 or whatever. So this one, my lower bound, the smallest number, would be 55. And then 60 is the upper that's shown, but remember we dropped back one, so it would be 59. And then the midpoint, this one I can drag down, and it should be 57. That's exactly the middle. So if I 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, the exact middle was 57. OK, so now I can grab all four of those and drag them down. And it should increase for me this time. Yeah, and you can see it bumped everything up by 5 on this side. And it saw my pattern, bumped them up by 5 on this side. 
And when you do the drags, just go back and verify a few to make sure. So I look at this one, 90 to 95, and it did 90 to 94, and it found the exact middle of those two numbers to be 92, and that looks correct. So I think it dragged correctly. I want to make these as small as I can, so I'm not taking up tons of space, and I might even want to have them wrap like this. There, that looks even better. So these three columns I added in just to help me do my histogram in Excel. But what I have now is the midpoint for each of my intervals. So I want to show that on the graph. So what I can do now is select my relative frequencies or the probabilities for each of those um, occurrences, the number of texts, each grouping, and I want to insert and I want to put in a column chart so just grab the first one and then I want to use layout 8 so I'm going to hover and wait for it to tell me what layout this one's layout 8 and it looks a lot like a histogram that's why I chose it it also has a chart title and it has axis titles so I'll be able to write those in so I want to make see how when I click on it it shows me the divisions between each bar I really like that and I want them to stand out so I right click and then format data series and then border color it says right now automatic well it's not doing what I want so I'll click solid line and then color of black so it'll stand out against the blue and then I'll say close and when I click off, now you can see that I have the black line separating all my bars, so it looks a little bit better. We have the number of texts received per day. That's down here, so we might want to just fill that in first, and then we'll come back to the title. It's a little easier when you remember what all your columns are representing. So number of texts received per day. And then along the side, it's, it's in probabilities. So it's either, um, we could either say probability or relative frequency or something like that. So probability, because it isn't in a percent form, it's in decimal form. So then um, now I want to write a chart title. So it's probability. And I think we leave off the per day. So probability of the number of texts received. So we'll put that for our title. I can make it a little bit smaller so it'll fit across the top. That looks a whole lot better. Okay, so the last thing on my graph is that I need to fix these numbers across the bottom because they don't correspond to my midpoints like they should. It should be 52 for this first block. 57 for the second, and so on. So I'm going to click on those numbers at the bottom, right click, and then select data. And here it says horizontal category axis labels, and horizontal is the one that I wanted to fix. So I'll say edit. And then it's going to let me come into my file and choose the data that I need to have on the graph. So I know it's this data here. So I select it, it puts the references in for me, and then I can just say OK. And it should show the numbers along here, and now I can say OK again. And there now it's showing the correct numbers. Number of texts received per day. Remember, we want the midpoint right below the figure, and there it's showing each one of those. OK, a couple of things that we need to do to wrap up. The first thing is I want to select my, my graph, so I just click on it somewhere so that the edges is kind of lit up, and then copy, I can use control C to copy, and then I want to open a Word document and use control V to paste, and there is my beautiful, beautiful chart. I'm going to hit carriage return or enter a couple of times so that I have a little bit of space and then I want to go back to my Excel file. I'm going to slide the, oh, try to, I'm going to slide my chart out of the way. And what I want to do now is select all of my data and my sums, everything that I used, and do Control C. 
and then go into the Word file and I'm going to paste it there using control V and double check that my um, columns didn't get like super wide or super narrow but everything looks good here push enter a couple of times come back to Excel now this one's something you haven't seen yet but I want you to click on any cell in your data and then use control tilde and it shows as you can see all the functions all the Excel calls that I made but it's all super wide again so I'll try to make those columns the right width again so that I don't have a ton of, of wasted space and we can read what I've got in the in the Word file. So I, I adjust my columns in Excel and these I had to adjust by hand. Select all of it again, Control C to copy and then go into Word, into the Word document I was creating and I already moved down some so I'll do Control V to paste and I may just want to put in a, a page break here so I'll just say insert page break and that puts me down on the next page and then I can have so in my in my word file right now I have the number of texts received as a nice chart and then I have my supporting data this is the stuff I calculated with all the this is the numbers view of my data and then the next page I have the formulas view so it's showing me all the formulas that I used when I was when I was creating that data so there's the formulas view the numbers view and the chart you should have all three in your file save your file to your desktop or somewhere and then email it to me thank you